Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Christy Lynn and this is baby Evelyn. She is just about five and a half months now, but today we're going to be talking about the seven tips that helped us get through that dreaded four month sleep regression. <laughs> You're happy now. You're a good little sleeper now, aren't you? Now that we're on the other side of it, hopefully these things will be helpful to you if you are right in the thick of it or you're just trying to prepare for it because maybe your baby is coming up on that three to four month mark. Do you see yourself in the camera? So if you're new and you like this type of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. But let's go ahead and talk about the seven tips for getting through this four month sleep regression. These are in no particular order. These are just a few things that really helped us and things I wish I had known about at the beginning or before hitting this milestone, which causes the sleep regression. So, but yeah, I just want you to know, you don't have to just survive it. You can actually thrive. You and your baby can get through it and you can help your baby progress in so many ways. If you, <laughs> she thinks it's funny. Um, if you just know a few things that are gonna help you out during it all. So let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one, I started waiting a couple minutes before pulling her straight out of bed whenever she woke up during the night. So this was a big one. I used to just grab her out of the bassinet the first whimper she made during the night. And this would happen numerous times during the night. Obviously, once we hit that sleep regression, it was happening sometimes every 45 minutes. And so I would, you know, I had the bassinet right there by my bed. So I would just, without even thinking, like half asleep, just grab her straight out of the bed and feed her. I assumed that's what she needed. But then I started to realize she wasn't that hungry all those times that she woke up in the night. And yeah, it was just the sleep regression. I started to realize that by me pulling her out of the bed immediately was actually what was waking her up fully. And once I started giving her a couple of minutes to just settle back into sleep, I realized that that fussing actually only lasted about 10, maybe 30 seconds. And then she was back into a deep sleep. Tip number two, I widened her wake windows. So wake windows is the amount of time that babies can stay awake and happily function before they need another nap or before they need to go to sleep. So she was going at about 60 minutes between naps and then between her last nap and her bedtime was about 60 minutes, give or take. And that was great up till about three to four months, right, when the sleep regression hit. And so I learned that I needed to start extending that time. I needed to start helping her stay awake longer instead of having so many naps throughout the day because she was fighting her naps. She was starting to fight bedtime and I didn't know what had really changed. So that was a big one. I widened her wake windows from about 60 minutes all the way up to about one and a half to two hours between naps and then between the last nap and bedtime. That helped tremendously and she stopped fighting her naps as soon as I implemented this. Now I did take a little bit. She was fussy and tired for a while as we started to widen those wake windows because she was used to sleeping every 60 minutes. So she was a little bit grumpy for a few days, maybe a week or two as I was doing this, but it did make the biggest difference once we had established those longer wake windows. Okay, tip number three. This is what I did. I moved her to her nursery and this was huge. So I definitely never planned to move her to her nursery for probably at least six to 12 months of her life. That is what's recommended that you keep them in their room for the first 12 months. But I found she just became, right around three and four months, she became so aware of her surroundings with all the changes, the developmental changes that were, ha that were happening around this time just made her that much more aware and it made it that much more difficult for her to both fall asleep but also stay asleep. My husband works in the night shift so he's always sleeping in there during the, the day and I'm in there during the night so during the day when I'm trying to give her naps 
you know, I'm waking him up, he's waking her up. It's just, it wasn't a good thing. And then at nighttime, I'm right there next to her. She can sense I'm there. If I stir, it's probably waking her up. You know, she might feel more hungry because I'm right there. And so moving her to her nursery was a good decision for our situation. Giving them more space between your bed and their bassinet could be really helpful. So definitely consider giving more space at the very least, but if not, moving them to their nursery could be a good next step for you all if you're having issues with them having interrupted sleep or just waking up a lot in the night. This made a big difference pretty much right away and I'm going to talk more about that later with some of the other tips. Since I moved her to the nursery and I was needing to unswaddle her, tip number four is to start using a wearable blanket or a sleep sack just to help with those feelings of security since they're no longer swaddled with their arms down. She was sleeping in the snoo bassinet which allows babies to remain swaddled for up to six months because it straps the swaddle in, it keeps them on their back so you don't have to worry about them rolling over. But since I moved her to her nursery and to her crib, I wanted to unswaddle her so I couldn't just do it cold turkey. She wasn't able to settle. She was scratching her face, just hitting herself in the face. Well, not so much hitting herself, but like just grabbing at her face and just not able to settle well. So I found a couple of transitional swaddles that really helped with this. One of them was the Zippity Zip Transition Swaddle. I will link that below. And then another one we're using right now is the Touched by Nature. I think it's just a long sleeve sleep sack. And it has the little mitts that fold over on their hands so it really keeps them from scratching their face. That can be really hard to find on um, anything that's not for a newborn because newborns you know they always make those little mitts that fold over but for an older baby it can be harder to find so I found these two things really helped a lot and I will link them both in the description but yeah some sort of wearable blanket just helps them feel secure they want to feel those edges when they wake up they want to feel like they're still contained um, they still you know are looking for that um, that snuggly feeling of being in the womb, I think. So just having that extra cover, that wearable blanket, that's not a loose blanket that's gonna you know, be riskier or dangerous for them at night, but it's a wearable blanket, so it zips up. And when they wake up, they can feel they're still somewhat contained and it's just sort of a security thing for them. Tip number five, going back to the nursery thing, I blacked out her room. I used blackout curtains along with blackout blinds and I even got this thing off of Amazon that fits under the door so no light from like out in the living room or when we're watching TV will get through to her room. It blocks off all the light. It helps block off sound from outside noises from in the rest of the house. So. I will link everything I used below in the description as well. And if you'd like to see a video all about how I blacked out the room, let me know because I found some products that really made it a lot easier. Plus I had to do some DIY things to really make it 100% pitch black, but I highly recommend this. I highly recommend you black out the room completely. If you're going through the sleep regression, this will help tremendously because even the slightest bit of light as the sun begins to rise, even around 4.30, 5 in the morning, it's starting to just barely start to lighten and that will wake them up. So I found that darkening the room really did make a difference. Before this, she was sleeping in our room, like I said, in our room, we, it was really bright in there, especially during naps. Like it was so bright in there. I need to get our room blacked out too so my husband can sleep better. That'd probably be nice, but he's kind of adjusted to it. But anyways, black out the nursery, black out the room, wherever your baby is sleeping, and it will probably make the biggest difference. Tip number six, I started a consistent nap time routine. So just like bedtime, where you might have a routine for your baby that kind of signals to them, okay, bedtime is after this, I gotta go to sleep. The same thing with naps, that is something I wasn't really doing consistently before. I didn't really know that it would make that much of a difference, but it really does. So my nap time routine is so simple. It's nothing long, like literally just a few minutes. After I feed her, I will change her diaper and then I will close the blinds and the curtains. I'll turn off the light and I'll leave just like a little like 
dim light on, whether it's just the light coming through her door or I'll turn on the closet light or a lamp, something like that. But anyways, you just want like a dim light so you can see still to put her to bed. And then I will turn on the sound machine and that really started to signal to her, I need to go to sleep because I noticed like as soon as I would turn on her sound machine, she would start yawning. So yeah, I do those things and then I will just hold her and either rock her in the rocking chair, but usually I'll just rock her in my arms and sing her a little song. And by that time, she usually is yawning. And then I will just lay her down in her crib and then put on that sleep sack or that wearable blanket, give her her pacifier, and she, 99.9% .9 of the time, no longer fights naps. So a nap time routine could make a big difference if you aren't already doing this. And then of course, right along with that, if you aren't already, make sure you establish a bedtime routine. Our bedtime routine is also really simple, but it is longer. You don't want to rush this because babies can sense if you're in a rush or if you're stressed. So you definitely want to take your time with your baby. Honestly, I set aside about an hour every evening to just get her ready for bed. You could probably do it in half an hour, maybe. I don't know about that, but anyways, for me, it takes about an hour from the time I give her a bath to the time I'm laying her down in her, in her crib. It's probably about an hour. And so, yeah, our bedtime routine is just kind of just a longer version of our nap routine, which is pretty much, um, I'll try to slow her down a little bit, maybe not do quite as stimulating activities or play time with her leading up to our routine. And then I will take her, give her a bath, and you know put her into a clean diaper put her into her pjs and then feed her and then if we need to change her diaper again <laughs> you know how it goes and then i will just sometimes we'll read a book but usually right now she is kind of impatient and she's pretty sleepy by that point so we'll try to get in a book if we can but if we can't then I will just hold her and I'll sing her a couple lullabies, a couple songs, and then I will just put her down into her crib, put on that sleep sack, and tell her good night, put give her her pacifier, and leave the room. Of course, I've turned on her sound machine and shut off all the lights, just like the nap time routine. And again, she never fights her bedtime anymore. I mean, never. She might fuss a little bit sometimes but usually she's just pretty much out. She'll find a comfortable position and she's out. Um, so yeah, be consistent with your bedtime and nap time routines. And I thought this probably wouldn't make that much of a difference, but it definitely has. So my last tip to help with that sleep regression is tip number seven, which is to educate yourself on what is actually going on with the four month sleep regression. So, there's a lot of resources online. I had no idea everything that was happening, but they are making a huge developmental leap. And it's really exciting for your baby. So definitely learn about what is happening. It'll help you be more understanding and be more patient when you understand why they're doing this, why they're going through this. And you know, just one of the things is that they are actually, um, they're going from having those baby sleep cycles to actually having adult sleep cycles. So they're, they, um, when they were really little, they would transition into a new sleep cycle, I think about every 45 to 60 minutes. And so I could see on the monitor, and you may have noticed this too with your baby, but every 60 minutes they will kind of stir and they'll either wake up or they might, you know, keep sleeping. But once they hit the regression, their sleep cycles become adult sleep cycles. So about every 30 minutes, she started stirring. Instead of every hour, I would see on the dot every 30 minutes, she'd stir and she'd either keep sleeping or more than likely she'd wake up and start crying when we hit the sleep regression. That's really how I knew it was here. So that is a huge change for them. And one of the things I didn't know was that you know, sleep is actually a learned skill. To become a good sleeper, we have to learn how to continuously kind of put ourselves back to sleep when we wake up. Because as adults, you may not know, but 
we actually wake up lots of times during the night, but we don't always remember all those times because we just can immediately put ourselves back to sleep. But babies don't know how to do this, at least a lot of babies don't automatically know how to do this and they have to kind of learn that when they wake up, it's okay. Like, you know, everything's okay. They can just go back to sleep. But, you know, when they wake up, they're kind of like, why am I awake? What do I need? What's going on? Am I hungry? Um, and then they might start crying. So it is kind of a learned skill. And so you can really help your baby learn healthy, long, deep, restorative sleep by educating yourself on what's going on and then really implementing some of these tips if they're helpful but also you know once you're educated you'll kind of know what to do for your baby and what they're going through and so i do recommend doing your research there are just a lot of resources out there but just you know learn about what's going on so that you do understand and you don't just feel like you know this is super frustrating and when is it going to end because until your baby can really learn how to put themselves back to sleep this can go on for a long time from what i've heard so as soon as i found out this was something that my baby needed to learn i definitely set out on helping her learn this skill because i didn't want her to have to suffer a long for a long time of not being able to put herself back to sleep so especially the first tip i talked about where just giving her those few seconds to kind of go back to sleep rather than me yanking her out of the bed and startling her and fully waking her that was a huge one but there's just so many other things that may be able to help your baby learn this skill so definitely do your research i couldn't i couldn't recommend that more and it was the most helpful thing to me well one of the most helpful things all of these things helped a lot but yeah this one was a big one as far as some educational resources that were helpful to me if you're wondering and you're curious obviously i did do a lot of like googling and just reading random blog posts and articles but i found it was most helpful to find like one thing and stick to it otherwise i just get confused trying all different things so one resource that I found to be extremely helpful that I plan to go to again time and time again if we have issues is the Taking Care of Babies uh, classes and Kara <laughs> has courses from the newborn stage all the way through I think two years and so what I did during the sleep regression when we were in it for about several weeks I purchased her three to four month PDF and that was a tremendous help. Obviously, I can't tell you everything that was on it because it is something you have to purchase. So if you are looking for a resource, you're curious, then I will link her information below. She's got a blog and she posts all kinds of content on that that's very helpful and free. And then of course on her Instagram, she's got daily tips on there. So if you can't spend the money on one of her classes, then I highly recommend follow her on either her blog or Instagram or both and you are going to just see she shares so much for free so that has been extremely helpful to me and I highly recommend you checking it out if you are looking for a place to start on just finding out what in the world is going on and also some tips of what you can do. Okay, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you are going through the sleep regression or you're coming up on it, leave me a comment below and let me know how it's going for you or what you're doing to prepare for it. Or if I missed anything, if you've been through it and you have some other tips, then definitely comment them below to help others out if you think I've missed something that's important. So, but yeah, if you like this kind of content, I hope you'll get subscribed and we will see you really soon in the next one, won't we, Evelyn? Won't we, Evelyn? <gasps> wow.